the general process for college students to receive accommodations is fairly simple, but it is extra work that they have to do in order to receive those accommodations. So most disability service centers really try to make the hoops that they have to jump through the least, you know, the least amount of steps because they already have a lot going on being a student on campus and transitioning into campus. But we, we do need to make sure that they're following some kind of steps in order for us to make sure they're getting what they need. So we do try to keep those as simple as possible and as clear. And like I say, unfortunately, every disability service office is different. But most of them will follow these six rules or these six steps. So first, you will have to register with the disability service office. Um, everyone is different here at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, we do an online application. Uh, sometimes they have just an email application. Sometimes they might have a paper application where you print off and then you mail it all in. Then you will likely meet with a disability service um, staff and that person is going to be doing an initial meeting with the student and looking over all of their documentation and talking with them about their self report in regards to you know what they experienced the accommodations they had in high school to determine what accommodations they're going to have here at the university. And then they're going to complete any accommodation trainings that they need to. So completing accommodation trainings is really completing um, a training so they know how to use their accommodations, how to make those requests, how to use those accommodations, um, and how to, how to find, maybe use some of the, the new technology that they may have access to now. And then they will follow the accommodation request process, whatever that is each semester, um, they will follow that process. And then they will meet with instructors and talk to instructors about those accommodations. So <clears throat> again, it comes back to the student taking that initiative and they're the ones that have to take the lead on letting us know everything that they need and making those requests for each of those classes. It is not, when they do make requests for classes, it's not a blanket for every single class, they get the same thing. They may have different accommodations for different classes, depending on the content, depending on the course, um, and depending on the structure of the course. And then finally, they need to communicate regularly with the Disability Service Office if they run into any kind of um, issues along the way, if they receive pushback from faculty, that's why we're here to help the faculty kind of navigate that, help the student navigate through that so we can um, figure out how to move forward and get that student the access that they need in that class. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some general AT accommodations. So adaptive technology accommodations are different than what they look like in um, in K-12. And so some examples of things, we'll talk about some examples of things that um, what they may have in K-12 and what they would have, what that would look like in the higher ed setting. So for alternative formats, um, you know, students may have a human reader. Um, they may require, or maybe they may lean on a parent to read all of their readings to them, or maybe they have a friend in class that reads to them, or they have a resource teacher that reads to them. Um, that is likely not going to happen in college. Human readers are not very likely um, something that a disability service office that can, can offer. So instead, what they might be given is a reading tool, something like Kurzweil 3000. That's what we use here at UW-Madison. But there's also other things like Read Write, um, Claro Read. There's many things out there that take PDFs and Word documents and they turn them into audio. And that is more likely the accommodation that a student maybe with a reading disability would have. They would um, be given PDFs or Word documents to upload into these softwares to have it then read to them, which it's, it's much different. And it does sometimes confuse the student because we've gone from a human reader to a automated reader. So it's that kind of very robotic voice that the student ha now has access to. So sometimes that's different for them. Obviously for alt formats, if you have somebody who is using braille, we provide braille for them. Um, we also provide, uh, if a student is using a screen reader, we don't just give them any format. 
when students are coming in to college with screen readers, we generally try to match whatever screen reader they have to the document that's going to work. So if we have somebody who's using a screen reader and Word documents work best, then we will convert everything into a Word document for that student to use the tool that they're used to using. Let's see, um, note taking. So this is something that really we, we struggle with a lot in higher education. A lot of students are receiving um, notes from instructors in K-12 or they're receiving, um, you know, kind of an outline format and then they can fill in information for notes. So they have a set of notes and then they're filling in information. Those are things that you will not find um, here in higher ed. So students usually are looking at some kind of note-taking tool. So here at UW, we have a kind of a note-taking toolkit that we match students with certain note-taking tools. Um, some of those are OneNote, Glean, um, Notability on an iPad. We also do access to presentation slides before class. Um, and then there are a very small group of students that get peer note-taking as an accommodation. And peer note-taking is really for students who are not able to leave the classroom with a set of notes. Um, so those are those are students who they're just not able to leave the classroom with any kind of set of notes, even if they had some kind of note taking tool to help them. So that that's something that we have a lot of discussion with about students in regards to the difference between peer note taking in K-12 and peer note taking in higher education. Furniture accommodations is something else that might be a little different. Um, and, and it might be also the same. Furniture accommodations in K-12 are usually, you know, preferential seating, or maybe you have a certain chair for a, a student, maybe you have like a bouncy, like a, a ball for a student to sit on. Um, here in, in higher ed, we also provide chairs for students, but they're more task chairs with like, um, maybe some cushioning or maybe, you know, a student needs a chair that doesn't have wheels or um, doesn't have armrests. So there's things like that, that we provide accommodations for. We also provide accommodations for standing height desks. So that way a student could stand in class if they needed to. Um, and we also provide uh, pre uh, preferred seating. It's a little different than K-12 where you have a seat and that's your seat all the time. Um, we do try to work that out. So that does happen, but sometimes it doesn't happen. We, we usually try to figure out a way to make sure that the student is um, getting the seat that they need, whether it's next to the door or in the front or in the back. But it might not be the exact seat every single time because there's no assigned seating in, in college. <clears throat> Um, audio description is another um, adaptive technology accommodation, and that's when students need audio descriptions when videos are being shown. Um, generally, those are sent out and a company goes through and watches the video and um, adds audio description to everything that you're seeing on the screen. Um, ALDs, we provide ALDs if students need them. And then testing accommodations. Uh, <clears throat> testing accommodations could be they could be many different things. Um, I think something that uh, K-12 receives a lot might be some might be a reader for a test or maybe a writing assistant for a test. And we generally don't provide those. We generally find other ways around um, uh, providing those accommodations to students. So if somebody needs a reader for an exam, we use um, our reading tools like Kurzweil 3000 to read it. Sometimes we might have an instructor record the exam or a TA record the exam, and then the student will listen to it and take the exam. Uh, we provide paper testing. Uh, we provide assistance with Scantrons, so there is a possibility to have assistance with Scantrons. We also provide in, um, enlarged text, and then also um, furniture for testing, we provide furniture for testing. Those are some examples of those um, adaptive technology accommodations.